Kraft route. Hello and welcome back to Gauls All Access. I'm your host, Andy Zilch. Prior to joining the San Diego Gauls coaching staff, Daniel Jacobs' hockey life took him from one of Canada's highest institutions of education to a four-year professional playing career in Europe, followed by a successful collegiate and professional coaching career. I sat down with the Gauls' new assistant coach to get his story on his playing and coaching career. We welcome to the show assistant coach Daniel Jacob. Thanks a lot for joining us and also welcome to the organization and the city of San Diego. Thanks for having me, appreciate it. Well, as a Canadian born citizen, I'm sure hockey was madness up where you grew up, but how did you originally get attracted to the sport and what was your team growing up? At an early age, I think it must have been four, you know, got a pair of skates and started skating and. Uh, on the outdoor rink and you know, slowly but surely ended up in minor hockey like like I said like it's uh, it's something that uh, I would say that probably 90% uh, of the kids back home and they don't they, they end up playing hockey at one point and let's move forward to your decision to go to college it was McGill University why was that the university that you selected yeah funny enough it was a fluke yeah, I applied to Ottawa University to be uh, to study criminology I wanted to become a uh, a police officer and uh, was supposed to enter university at 20 years old. The coach back then decided that I needed another year of junior, which I didn't want to do. And then uh, Marty Raymond from McGill came and, you know, we had some good discussions and I ended up, uh, you know, attending McGill and probably to this day, one, you know, the best decision I ever, uh, ever took. Well, you jump over to play overseas after just a small segment here in North America. What was the decision to go overseas and then eventually play for a good time in Serbia? Yeah, uh, we, with McGill, uh, we traveled twice to Europe. That was part of uh, my first year and my last year. We ended up traveling. It was my first time, you know, taking the plane. I was 20 years old again and we went to Germany, Holland, and we played some professional teams over there. And I knew like, that's something I wanted to do. Like, I wanted to travel, I wanted to play. Uh, that was a great opportunity for me to, uh, right after college, to, uh, you know, to, to travel to Europe and play professionally uh, in Austria. And led me to uh, Sweden, led me to uh, Serbia, where uh, we ended up starting a, a kids program. And I met my wife, you know, we have a son, I have a house over there. So you see, hockey brought me so many good things. I can, uh, so, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, I've been really fortunate. How did you start the program over there and what started the, the generation of that? Um, so when, when we first showed up, part of it was to get involved uh, with the kids. It was already a small club, but nothing, you know, just, just a few kids. So, so for us, it was really to give a bit of a, let's get involved with the, with the program. Let's make sure that we, we get in and make a difference. So that was, that was part of the thinking where we can, we can still play, we can still train, but then on our time off, let's Let's spend some time and give back. So that's it was tough for the kids. So it was a good opportunity for us to step in and you know kind of have that. Uh, we, we, we learned language, met some great families. We'd go over for dinner uh, at different family spaces. So we learned so much from getting involved. That was the you know another good decision on our part. We'll go to your coaching uh, career now. And in 2010 is when you began at McGill. What drew you to coaching? I always knew I wanted to coach. Uh, from a young age, I was getting involved into hockey schools. I knew I liked it. I don't know, uh, and, and obviously, I don't have an NHL background, so I knew that it would be. I would have to grind it out. Uh, you know, it's, and, and I was ready to do uh, to do that. And then the new coach back then that got the job at McGill, Kelly Nobes, was my assistant coach when I first started at McGill in 2000. But I, I wasn't able to speak English. I didn't speak English. We barely spoke. So when I saw that he got appointed as a coach shoot him a quick email as a joke saying, hey, congrats, really happy. And now if you, he, he moved close to my, to my home uh, back in, uh, in Montreal. So I said, if you want to meet for a drink or a bite, now I can actually talk to you. you know? <laughs> so that's how it all started. We went for lunch and Kelly gave me a huge, a huge opportunity. 
definitely in, in the coaching. And then you move on in your coaching with Joel Bouchard at the Armada. So how did the relationship between you and Joel begin? We didn't know each other. I was actually giving, um, uh, I was presenting at a high performance uh, uh, coaching seminar with uh, Hockey Quebec and uh, then I got, I got a call from Joel. I know his head coach at that time left uh, for the pros, uh, GF Wool, and then I, I got the call, I wanted to meet, you know, the opportunity to maybe step in and, and help out. And uh, I always going to remember, you know, I'm all dressed with my polo, I, you know, trying, and then I, I show up in Joel jeans and t-shirt and uh, probably spoke for an hour. And it was the most, you know, when you don't know somebody, but it, it felt so natural that I ended up ac accepting the job and made the move to junior major. And uh, yeah, it's been, been seven years now. Yeah, that, that time span, you guys have been through not only the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, Laval, here in San Diego now. Just describe your relationship and what works so well between you two. Uh, the way he thinks of the game, uh, the way he is as a person and his values, you know, it's, it's a tough business. And uh, the one thing uh, that I like about Joel is that he's, he's an honest man. You know, he's honest with his players, he's honest with his staff. Uh, as passionate as, as he can be, like he's fair. I like that about him. We don't even need to talk anymore. Like we, we see kind of the same, the same things, but at the same time, if something is not right, you won't be shy to tell me, I won't be shy to tell him. So I think in that sense, we, you know, everybody's accountable and you know, we get better because of it. So it, you know, it's, it's been a fun relationship and I consider him a friend, so. Your goals are in the holiday spirit. We paired a few of the players up for a gift wrapping challenge. Here's a look. Hey Gulls fans, I'm Trevor Carrick. I'm here with a couple of my fellow teammates for round one of the Gulls gift wrapping challenge. Each team has a set amount of time to wrap the new Gulls beanie. At the end, I'll pick the winning team. Both teams ready? All right, go! Come on, boys. Oh, they're working well, the roommates. Oh! Oh, they're gonna keep it. They're gonna keep it. Ah! I think, I think the trick here is slow and steady like these two. You just gotta let her slide, Oli. Kinda looks like my four-year-old niece did that. Oh, they're going the burrito method. They're going the burrito method. That's it, guys, that's it. We're all done here. I think the winner goes to these two here, hey. the Young Bucks. Hey Gulls fans, I'm Trevor Carrick and I'm here with a couple of my teammates today for round two of the Gulls Gift Wrapping Challenge. Each team has a set amount of time to, to wrap these autograph uh, hockey sticks and at the end I'll, uh, I'll pick the winner. So, both teams ready? Yeah. yeah. Alright, go! A little bit of a more more difficult object here, the hockey stick. Um, not gonna sure how they approach this one, but communication is key here, folks. Use, uh, use your voices. That's it, good teamwork here, folks. Oh, are you guys using two different? Oh, I like that, I like the approach. You got the comm team over here, and then <laughs> lunatics over here. What? <laughs> that's it. That's it. Hey, hey, you done. You guys were looking good about till halfway here, and then I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happened at the end. And then you got Trace and Yoss here. Well, I know it's a little better than yours. I think that they still are uh, coming out on top. I think we got another win coming to uh, Yoss and Trace here. Hopefully, we can give these sticks to some deserving goals fans at the game. Thanks for watching, and go goals. Christmas movie, Home Alone. Yeah. Oh, Christmas. Christmas is still Christmas. Christmas vacation. Bad Santa. Uh, home Alone. Uh, Polar Express. Home Alone. Elf. Yeah, Elf. I'm always on the plane. Gotta be Home Alone. First one. Yeah, buddy, the Elf is pretty good. In my young days, I would say Home Alone. But now that's it. I don't watch movies anymore. Doing video from those guys. Coming up, we recap our annual Gulls Night at Rady Children's Ice Rink at Liberty Station, right here on Gulls All Access, 
presented by California Coast Credit Union. Your San Diego Gulls weather forecast predicts hockey with a chance of teddy bears. The teddy bear toss returns Saturday, December 18th on Winter Wonderland Night as your Gulls battle the San Jose Bears Scrooges. I mean, Barracuda. Enjoy a festive pregame tailgate between 5 to 7 p.m. plus a Gulls holiday beanie for the first 8,000 fans to enter the arena. Get your tickets to Winter Wonderland Night at SanDiegoGulls.com slash promotions. The Gulls recently hosted their annual Gulls Night at Rady Children's Ice Rink at Liberty Station. We were there to capture all the holiday fun. Hi, welcome to the Rady's Ice Rink. We're so glad to be back here at Rady's Rink. It really is such a wonderful night where we can bring everybody out, give away some goodies, host a raffle to raise additional funds, and just do what we love to do, ice skate. It's our 25th year, and um, after the last year and a half, we all really needed this. So uh, we're thrilled, and uh, the season's off to a good start. We have a lot of folks out here enjoying family time, having some outdoor physical activity. It's fantastic, and we're, we're so excited the goals are here this evening. Well, Rady is such a great partner to work with. Um, they make it really easy on us to bring out our crew, set up our inflatables, set up our promo tent, and just come out with all of our great stuff. Uh, the community always responds positively to this event. We've got so much fun things that we can do together. The, the children at the hospital really love seeing the partnership, and our staff is so excited, and I think more and more of us are getting to enjoy goals games, and we just cannot wait for a full, normal season. You know, life is good. It's just awesome to have hockey back, to, to be able to go to live hockey. And now that we have things like this Rady's Children's Hospital support, um, it's great. It's, it's amazing to be back in the Goals community. I'm part of the colony in any way that we can support San Diego community. We love to help out. We wish our guys were here this year. We're going to look forward to that in the years to come. But we're happy to have everyone out, get some photos with Gulliver and the Gulls girls, and just wish everyone an early happy holiday season. Now it's time to catch you up on the San Diego Gulls on the ice. The Gulls have been red hot, and as of last weekend, they won six of their last nine games. And a lot of that is due to the young talent on this club. Let's focus in on one of those young, talented players, Braden Tracy. Tracy captured the AHL Player of the Week award two weeks ago by tallying seven points in three games. The young forward has found his way in the American Hockey League after going pointless in 12 games last year in his brief stint in the professional level. This season, Tracy has elevated his game to be one of the top point producers for the San Diego Gulls this season. Through last weekend, Tracy continued to stay hot, picking up three points in three consecutive games. The 20-year-old knows that it's not just an individual effort and credited the group around him for getting the award from the American Hockey League. I try not to look at things like that, but obviously it's a, it's a huge accomplishment. I can't do it without my team, uh, coaches, players, everyone. I think uh, everyone puts a big impact on that week. I'm happy that he's uh, responded well to the high requirement that we ask as a coaching staff and you know step up as a rookie in the league and uh, get recognition because you accomplished something. Another player to highlight is defenseman slash forward Nicholas Bruyard. I say that because the player has been a utility man for the San Diego Gulls and when asked, he has played both the wing and on the blue line for the coaching staff. During the month of November, he predominantly played on the blue line and tallied the most points out of any defenseman in the American Hockey League during that month with 13. Bruyard recognizes 
that his ability to play both sides of the ice makes him a key facet to the club. I mean, I practiced, I practiced today uh, on D and forward because right now I might play D this weekend, So, uh, uh, but I, I like it. I mean, uh, I think I've been doing pretty well forward and uh, I'm just working hard, you know. Just want to keep my place in the lineup and uh, wherever it be, whether it's on D or on forward, I'm just, I'm just going to do my best every night. Like my, my position was always D, so uh, even if I'm going to play 20 games on forward, it, when I'm going to go back D, I think I'm going to be just fine. And last year, I think that's what I did too. Uh, it's always an adaptation to go back forward because it's more it's less natural for me but uh, I've played D all my life so uh, even if I don't play for uh, for a month or two on D even if I go back to D I I'm fine so and as we close on the recap on the ice the San Diego Gauls are whipping up some home cooking and it started last week and against the Ontario rain with a big win that kick starts the seven game homestand the longest in team history and backed by America's finest fans, the Gulls still boast the best attendance in the American Hockey League. During this seven game homestand, the Gulls will face off against six different opponents that included Wednesday's game against the Abbotsford Canucks, a new team in the division. All of these games are divisional opponents and a big opportunity for the Gulls to climb the standings. The homestand continues tonight and tomorrow and we have a great weekend for fans that'll come to the Pechanga Arena. The game tomorrow features the Winter Wonderland tailgate from 5 to 7. It's Teddy Bear Toss Night, so when the Gauls score the first goal, you send your Teddy Bears to the ice. In addition to that, the first 8,000 get the Beanie Giveaway. It's going to be a great weekend at the Pachanga Arena. Fans, we look forward to seeing you there. Coming up, we'll have part two of our sit down with assistant coach Daniel Jacob and learn about his time as a reality TV star right here on Gulls All Access presented by California Coast Credit Union. Sling your way to Pechanga Arena San Diego on Saturday, January 15th for Marvel Superhero Night as the Gulls battle the Abbotsford Canucks at 7 p.m. Assemble at the arena early for a pregame tailgate between 5 to 7 p.m. to enjoy drink specials and take photos with Hull. Plus, the first 8,000 fans in the building receive a Gulliver superhero poster. Get your tickets now at sandiegogulls.com slash promotions. Trevor Zegras shocked the hockey world last week with his incredibly creative alley-oop assist to Sonny Milano on December 7th in Buffalo. Oh, look at this! Brings it up. Miller goes to knock it off. He shoots it in front. Oh, what it's a Milano. pass to Milano. Wow. Zegras's unique flip pass landed him all over sports media blogs and shows, including Sports Center Scott Van Pelt and actor Michael B. Jordan, giving the former goal major props. Zegras racked up eight points during a four game point streak in the first week of December and is co leading all NHL rookies with 16 assists this season. The magic of Trevor Zegras. The goal scorer of that highlight reel goal was Sonny Milano, who has briefly appeared with the Gauls for three games. The forward entered the month of December by collecting points in four consecutive games that included three straight games with a goal. Sonny Milano bats it out of midair, tying the game. On the season, Milano has recorded eight goals and added 12 assists for a total of 20 points, tied for third most points on the club. When we last talked to you, we mentioned an Anthony Stolar shutout. Well, he did it again on that December 7th game with 25 saves against the Sabres. Anthony Stolarz has his shutout, the fifth of his career. Through last weekend, his record has moved up to 5-2-1 with a 93 save percentage and a 2.26 goals against average. And now part two of my interview with assistant coach Daniel Jacob. And you've had a full month and a half of experiencing San Diego Gulls hockey in San Diego. What has been your thoughts of the fan base here in the community? Oh man, it's impressive. It's impressive. Like, uh, I heard from her because I cheated, right? I asked her a lot of questions. But the one thing you said, said the fan base, they're fun. Man. It's packed, it's loud, it's fun. Um, you know, even after games, they wait for players. So, you know, so far it's been, it's been outstanding, you know, I'm impressed. And I did a little research on more of your side away from hockey, and I realized that you're a reality TV star. Oh, man. So, well, tell us that story. Wow, yeah, um, yeah, the, the, the making the cut. So, 
I was just waiting for my name to be called. During the final tryout in Montreal, the scouts discovered Daniel Jacob. I think he's got an upside to come yet. He added to his credentials by winning the hardest shot competition with a blast of 96 miles per hour. I'll make it. I'll surprise everybody. Lockout year, and uh, they're starting that reality TV show uh, called Making the Cut. The goal of it was everybody that didn't have some pro contracts, so they would tour Canada. You would get a chance to have a, like, a, like an NHL uh, training camp for one of the Canadian teams. So uh, I didn't make much out of it. And then my friends uh, said, why don't you give it a try? So I just remember, yeah, whatever. Okay, I'll go and I'll show up. And I showed up at, uh, in Brassard, I think it was, for uh, the tryouts. And from then, get the call that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in the final 72, if I'm, or yeah, 62, 72, that would go in Vernon. And it was, it was like a, a boot camp. Like we, get up in the morning and you would either go and yes for practice and you would get a beating in the gym then you would play a game and you would rotate those three elements throughout the two weeks uh, no radio no phones uh, no tv just you know focusing on hockey and to me coming from uh, coming uh, i was a late bloomer so nobody really knew about me 95.7 almost broke the 96 mile per hour shot that won it for him kelly you're right the training camp in vernon and the new leader is daniel jacob the winner of the Reader's Choice Award is Daniel Jacob. That reality show really gave me a chance to be seen by NHL people. And I, after my, uh, my fourth year, I got a chance to go and do a rookie camp for the Florida Panthers, which I would have never imagined, but that's all because of that making the cut reality show. I wouldn't go as far as being a reality show star because I don't <laughs> think it's ever going to happen again. But with that being said, it was, it, it was fun. I never say never. This show might open up opportunities. <laughs> you know, I have big ears. They're always open. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it for this show. Join us next time as we talk with Gaul's defenseman, Brogan Rafferty, who shares similarities with Gaul's great, Willie O'Ree. We'll touch on that next episode. For this episode, thank you to the cast and crew and to you for watching. My name is Andy Zilch.